For more on now, uh, we have Eleanor Cliff joining us. She's a political analyst at the Daily Beast and American News and Opinion website. The significance of today. Well, there's a member of the inner circle, a former national security advisor, who is now saying he will uh, cooperate fully with the special counsel. He is pleading guilty to lying to the FBI, which carries a five-year prison sentence in this country. Uh, and we now have someone to fill in all of those uh, blanks in the story of the Russian involvement in the campaign and what the connection was between the Trump high command and WikiLeaks and trolls on uh, Google and Facebook. Uh, and uh, it, the story is beginning to have some shape. And I think President Trump is probably feeling a little nervous about where this is going. And uh, in the information that came out today, he was directed by a senior transition official. There's a lot of news agencies now saying it's Jared Kushner, the uh, son-in-law of the President of the United States. How many people at the White House are going to have sleepless nights tonight? And, and who might they be, do you think? Um, I think Jared Kushner is, uh, he's already been called before the special counsel for another uh, meeting. Uh, he has been now identified. Flynn has apparently identified him as his source in the campaign. Uh, I think the other people around uh, the president, uh, Steve Bannon, who's not at the White House anymore, but I imagine he's part of this, and uh, Hope Hicks, who's the president's uh, uh, director of communications, who operates uh, so under the radar, most people don't even know what she looks like. But she's been in all of these meetings, and so she'll be testifying. Um, but in terms of wrongdoing, I think w we don't know yet what what the wrongdoing is and 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 who and who it might affect i think it's a question of whether you had a ca campaign officials uh working with a uh, hostile government to tilt the election uh towards uh donald trump and uh there are some laws that say the logan act you can't uh be negotiating policy with another uh, country. This isn't exactly policy. So I think people aren't quite sure where the illegality is. But I think what they're looking at is obstruction of justice and the president's attempts to shut down this investigation. And we keep learning uh, more about those attempts. Uh, and I think that's the, uh, that's, that's the key here, is was there a conspiracy to uh, affect the election with uh, Donald, candidate Donald Trump at the center. And, and uh, it reminds us of the, the Nixon administration. It was the obstruction that really was the, the major problem for the, the White House. Then obstruction looks like it's a, a it not only is well, he looking at collusion, but he's looking at obstruction. It brings to mind the conversation he had with Comey saying, hey, lay off, uh, don't go after Flynn. Didn't say anything about Manafort, but Flynn. Um, and then Sally Yates uh, being dismissed. So the Mueller investigation really has two prongs, don't they? And both could well, be very seriously, they could be serious problems for the right. White House. Well, it, if, if the president had never fired James Comey, I don't think we'd be here today talking about this. Uh, and uh, the president does seem to think that he has virtually dictatorial powers. And I'm sure that they're talking about whether uh, they can uh, fire Mr. Mueller. I think that would really create a constitutional uh, crisis. And I'm sure they're talking about whether they can actually pardon uh, Mr. Flynn. And the consensus seems to be that if he did that, that would be another uh, uh, indication of obstruction of justice. He would just get himself into, into bigger trouble. So I don't know what the president does except sort of grit his teeth and, and uh, you know, let this unfold. He was noticeably quiet on Twitter. And he didn't. He he appeared in the White Which House, is but right. That's right. He appeared in the White House, but the reporters were not allowed into the into the session. So uh, nobody's been able to yell a question at him. Uh, there are some suggestions that he might, you know, fire his attorney. I mean, he he must be wanting to fire somebody in order to try to change the trajectory here. And there there are concerns about his uh, erratic behavior. And um, when you hear the attorney at the White House, Ty Cobb, basically say, oh, well, this is going to be wrapped up by Christmas. And he's been assuring the president that he's not a target of the investigation. That's a, it sounds like a lot of happy talk. Um, 
trying to keep the lid on a uh, very explosive uh, presidential personality. And, and Mueller seems to be sending messages too. Uh, Papadopoulos, Flynn, you cooperate with us, we'll go easy on you. Right. Manafort, you don't answer the questions, you don't cooperate, we're gonna throw the book at you. So the more people they talk to, uh, they know what the stakes are, don't they? Oh, they do. And um, <laughs> there aren't too many more people uh, that he can, uh, subpoena uh, and assure them that they are going to be okay. I mean, he keeps, he keeps going down this list. And at some point, I think we're going we're gonna to get the goods on whatever there is to, mm -hmm. to learn. Not so much what the Russians wanted out of the, out of the relationship, but what Donald Trump wanted out of the relationship. And I think that's where you get into the, the financial dealings that Manafort was expert at. We're going to have to leave it there. Eleanor Clift, always okay. a pleasure. All right. Thanks so Thank much. Thank you. I'm sure we'll have you back.